It doesn't get any better than this. Championship Wednesday in Division II softball. And we are ready to hand out a trophy here this afternoon. Jim Hollister back to Davis. She throws to first. North Georgia, you are the national champions. Here we are. I mean, yeah. dude, you got two of these now. Talk a little bit about the, the journey you've been on here this year. Well, pretty cool stuff. Um, we're very excited to, to bring another one to the, uh, the University of North Georgia. Um, at, you know, people have asked me what the difference is, and I think, I think with the first one, you know, everybody's trying to get that first one. And when you're lucky enough and fortunate enough to get the first one, then all of a sudden, um, you become the hunted a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of a target on your back because you can, you know, that'll never be taken away from that. 2015 was did something that this university will always go down in history as winning the first school, the school's first and only team national championship. But then getting that second one, everybody that comes after is now playing North Georgia, the defending national champions of 2015. One quote I like, uh, heard from a lot of people is like, there's pressure, or there's privilege in pressure. And I think like it's an honor to be able to play at this level and to be known and to have that pressure of being a part of UNG. I mean, it's pretty cool. And especially our community just helps us feel special too. Like after we won, I've been stopped in Walmart. Be like, congratulations, like feel famous. But it's just, it's, it is a privilege, so. To me, it's amazing in itself because so many people look at D1 and that's all they care about is just going D1. Doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what school, they just want the image of being a D1 player. And I know personally, the same for anyone on this team, we just want to be somewhere that we can compete. And that's what North Georgia is. It's you're where you are going to play your best competition, but you are going to be known for it. What does it take though to turn a program into a national champion? I think the university itself kind of lends to, there's a lot of talent in the state of Georgia. Uh, we get to utilize the Hope Scholarship, the Dahlonega area, the campus, the university sells itself, and then of course our facilities. And so I think you started just kind of, everything started to fall into place um, probably about five, ten years into my, my coaching career. I, I do remember early on I had talked to one of my former assistants and I said, just an average dude and we'll never win anything. It just felt like we could never get over that hump. We always finished about fourth or third in the in the league and then all of a sudden it just started to click and we went on a run when we were NAI for a couple years and had some big time success, especially our last two years at the NAI level. And then after that, um, once we transitioned to Division II, we felt like we could compete because it opened some doors that we probably didn't have at the NAI level. The years before, we kind of had the idea the first year we went that we knew we were supposed to be there and we knew the players. Um, we had, I think, five or six that were crazy, amazing athletes. And we knew, okay, this year, without doubt, we should. And we didn't, and that was a big kind of gut punch. And all the ones that returned that year, or for the next year, we said, okay, they left, but we know what's left and who's coming in. Tybee came in, like everybody that we had come up, we knew what we were capable of then also, because Tybee had the experience that one year. And so the second year when we lost out, no one expected us to make it because everyone's like, you lost your key players. And so to me, that was satisfying at least to say, look, we did it. And now we know next year we're going to make something happen. And so this year it was, we all knew we're getting back there. It's a matter of time. And regardless of what we face, the injuries, whoever, whatever comes our way this upcoming year, we are determined to get to that spot and get past the final four. So. Um, in the season, we were like cruising with our win streak, and I think the biggest adversity was whenever we got our two losses, because then we were like, what are we going to do? What happened? And so bouncing back from that, I feel like was the biggest adversity, because we were just cruising, we were expecting us to win, we were just like cruising, like I said. We faced three of the best pitchers in the country our last 
four games of the year. Uh, three young ladies I don't ever want to see again. Um, very talented young ladies, um, very accomplished in, at their institutions and for the, the game of college softball. They were, they were unbelievable. Um, but our kids just like, and I think I heard one of our players say it in the past, they just, they want, they were, we were just playing another game and another game and another game and they really didn't want it to end. And I know a lot of coaches say that, but for them, it was just an opportunity for them to just play together again. Well, let's move into that championship series mm -hmm. as Grand Valley. I mean, you were a huge part of that series. Um, talk about that game and, and, and just go from, you know, the start to the finish. <laughs> well, the first game they jumped, first inning of the first game, they jumped out on us pretty quick. And I kind of remember being like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, here we go. We actually, it's time to turn it on. Well, I actually started that game and, you know, the nerves of being the championship game were, you know, really hitting me. Um, and we came in with a game pitching game plan, me and Aaliyah did, and we had to change that game plan because they were hitting stuff that we thought were their weaknesses. And so then we had to move our whole game plan. So moving the game plan, and then I got to the fifth inning and luckily Sophie could pick me up when I got some runners on and they got used to my pitching kind of thing and she closed it. But. It's really fun coming in after Tyvee and Kristen because we pitch so differently. They throw a lot of up, I throw a lot of down, so it's a very different look. Um, I just came in that game wanting to finish it for the team, just focusing on my body position, not what was actually going on. But yeah, we had some big hits. Liv drove in the first two runs and then um, had an, scored the other run too, and then Wick hit the home run. I think, yeah, Sid had a big triple, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of offensive help there. So when Maddie and Jolie got on base, um, I knew Sophie did a good job of moving them up, and so did Hannah, and I knew like, okay, kind of time to go. And looking at the fans, looking at everybody there, it's awesome just having that kind of environment to perform in. And then, like I said, Tybee threw a, an amazing game. And when you have a pitcher that's working her butt off just to get what she needs done, you want to perform for someone like that. And that's, that's what makes this team special, is we all want to help each other succeed. And so Tybee did her part, and we all knew that it was time for us to do the same. This team just, they never blinked. Um, this is one of the most unselfish teams I've ever been around. I think the culture of college athletics now has created some entitlement, um, even across high school athletics, all, all of athletics. There's, there's a little bit of entitlement we're all fighting. And, um, but I think for me, this team was extremely unselfish. Um, sure, the kids wanted to pitch more, probably wanted more at bats, play a little bit more defense. But I think overall, they just, they did not care. They, they enjoyed watching their teammates succeed. And that was very refreshing and very rewarding for us. I was excited. I wasn't yeah. nervous. After we got game one under our belt, I feel like we were just like, all right, let's go. Yeah, I feel like after we're we done. got game one, we were just like, we got this. Yeah. So at the hotel, honestly, I mean, we have people playing like different games and like a thing called minion ball that the team like <laughs> took on. And we were just having fun and like actually enjoying the moment and not really stressing about the game because no matter the outcome, like we knew that we were capable of doing it. Well, I remember as soon as we won game one, we all were like, one more, one more. And then I remember laying in bed at night. <laughs> Hannah was my roommate, Hannah Forehand. And both of us were talking like, man, we hope we just win the first one tomorrow. Like, But like Tyvee said also, during that night, we were all still relaxed. We kind of, we were in a good position. We set ourselves up for a good position. And so we knew, let's just kind of stick to what we're doing. Let's have fun, minion ball. Like we played in the ballroom. <laughs> we did what we needed to do to kind of relax and take our mind away from it. Because when you lay down that night, that's all you're thinking about. So you had to kind of escape for a second. And like I said, I mean, we even had my roommate and I, we had affirmations written down. <laughs> and we, we, yeah, we held it. If you go look at pregame, we're holding hands looking at each other and telling, telling them. But I think it's, you just have to do to kind of do anything you can to level yourself out for that situation. Well, what turned out to be the championship game on the next day for you guys? Uh, started a little bit slow offensively. You guys kind of just tacked on some runs here, went up 3-0 and then held them. Um, you know, throughout that game, talk about, you know, maybe 
your feeling during that game to see how it was going. Not a whole lot of offense being displayed by either side. You guys held on for that big trip. Well, Kristen actually started that game, and she's been doing great all year. And um, I think as a pitching staff, we each have confidence in each other. And I had all the confidence in the world to know that she could get it done. And after the first game, like I talked to her and I was like, these are things that worked for me, these are things that didn't. And you know, just going in and like trying to help her the most as I can and cheering her on in the dugout and stuff like that. I mean, um, I was hitting that game, so I was, I was just focusing on hitting, trying to produce for Kristen because she was lights out. And um, I just knew after we got that third run across, I really just, I didn't expect Chris to give up four runs. I didn't see us losing that game. And then especially after that big play by Maddie Perry in the sixth inning, or the fifth, diving play, I just, we all knew the game was over. We felt that, so it was just exciting after that, you know. Um, well, up until we scored, I remember thinking, oh man, like, we really need to <laughs> get this going quick. But then, when we finally scored, honestly, when we scored the first run, it kind of sinks in to where like, okay, you knew you had to score some more because Grand Valley was an amazing team. Um, but we knew as soon as you get the first one across, things can kind of open up for you. And that's what happened. And so I think Sophie coming up with the big swing there allowed everyone to take a step back, breathe. And then once we scored the other two, it kind of was just, here we go, like this is happening. Like, I mean, Jill's kind of thinking about it now, but it's happening. And like Sophie said, Maddie Perry coming up with the huge diving catch. That, that really was the game changer. If that gets through, it's a whole different ball game. And when that happened, it was like, wow, like we're really about to do this. Like it's, it was awesome. Good way for you to go out, right? Yeah, amazing. I'm, me and all the other seniors actually talk about that all the time. Like this is, what a way to kind of just end it. Like you don't have to worry about anything else. And I honestly haven't been sad since I've stopped playing just because it's like, I can close my book knowing I did everything that little eight year old me set out to do, so. Every softball player dreams of being a national champion, so it's really just a dream come true. I've always wanted to win a national championship, as has everyone on my team, so it was really just awesome. So, yeah. um, I think nothing really compares to it. Um, a lot of us were state champions, but like being a national champion, it's just different, and it was a lot harder for us to get there, and we've worked our whole lives to get to that stage, and it's just really what does it feel like to you to, to be that national power? Well, I don't, I don't feel it. Um, I, I think for us, we're just, you know, again, as coaching, I think, and um, my job is to have every young lady reach her potential, whatever that may be. And if it's, you know, if it's for her to start 10 games uh, her, by her sophomore year, then that's my job to get her there. If it's, if, if, if it's her ability to be an All-American at this level, then it's our job to get her there. And same thing with our program. If our job, if our, if our potential as a program can win a national championship, then it's my job to get us there and, and to keep fighting and keep doing all the little things that it takes to get there. So um, I, I do, you know, I think the second one, like you had mentioned maybe earlier, that it just kind of validates you a little bit because the first one, you know, there's a lot of program, not a lot, but there's quite a few programs that get one, uh, but getting two means you're you're there. And um, one of the things that's always kind of stuck with me in coaching and what I've driven, what's driven me as a coach is sustained success. And I want to be in the mix every year. And I think we've done that. Um, I still don't think it's sunk in, honestly. Um, we all still talk about it. And I think Sophie mentioned how you go out in the community and people recognize you. I was at the golf course and a guy was wearing a North Georgia hat and we struck up a conversation and, oh, you're Olivia. And I think just kind of having that in our, within our community, it feels awesome that we're doing something to put Delanago on the map and North Georgia in itself and our program and our school. So it's really cool.